Hi hey YouTube, this is Patrick, and I'm going to talk about um, Breaking Bad. I uh, finally caught up. Uh, my friend bought me Season 1 on Blu-ray, and um, I immediately bought Seasons 2 and 3 before I even finished Season 1, before I even kind of got hooked on it, because um, I knew I was most likely going to. Um, and then I just finished Season 4. Um, I don't know why... I didn't watch the show when it was on. I always heard it was so good and everything like that. Not even so good. I always heard it was just like, you know, the best show on um, is what most people would say that would watch it. Not that it's good, not that it's great, but it's the best thing on television. Um, and I can see why they say it after watching uh, all four seasons of it. Um, I'm putting this up now because I plan on at least reviewing the final season as it goes up um, this year and next year or whatever. I don't know how AMC is going to split the last 16 hours. Um, I'll just give my thoughts on it. Um, well, at least the, the quick version of the plot is that uh, the main character, Walter White, is a chemistry teacher who gets um, inoperable lung cancer. Um, he's taking chemotherapy for it, but he basically decides that he's not going to live, uh, so he enlists the help of his old student... Uh, Jesse Pinkman, who and the two of them decide to make uh, methamphet methamphetamine together, um, and uh, well, it's apparently the best on the market, and yeah, that's kind of the setup for it. Um, but it's really, uh, it's so much more than that. The the characters, the two main characters, played by Brian Can Cranston and Aaron Paul, are just they're so well played, so well acted, and you know, to be honest, if I had to describe uh, this show in one word, it would also probably be, I think, the best compliment that you could pay to something like this, and that that would be effortless. It's just every plot line, every every shot, the film, the uh, the film, it's like a film. the uh, The show visually is just awesome, but shots they don't feel planned everything feels natural the, what the character the choices the characters make feel natural all the acting feels natural um and that's just an incredible strength of the of the writing it's, just, it's really amazing that anyone can do that because i watch a lot of shows good shows too that you know you can see stuff coming a mile away or you'll you can spot um a particular kind of plot line um you know, if something happens, it may feel like a cop-out or something like that, but not on this show, because when it happens, you, you're you surprised somehow. Everything feels, like, organic, and you're, yet, and you're just so... You know, if a character from Season 1 um, seems insignificant, and then they show up again in Season 3, and it turns out they were very significant, um, you don't look at it and go... You, you know, they as they were writing it, they were probably... I doubt they probably like would know something like that, but they they somehow they're able to pull it off. They are just it's effortless. It really is. Um, I guess I'll do a quick rundown of what I thought of each season. Season one, uh, I was told was cut short by the writers' strike. Um, so the thing that really dominates season one is the uh, Walt dealing with his cancer, or deciding if he's going to deal with it. Um, that pretty much led to the. Uh, uh, the best episode of that season where he has, like, an intervention. Um, let me see what I can... You know what? Forget going by seasons. I'll, um... Uh, I'll just go by characters. Uh, first of all, Cranston, who plays Walt, is just so good. He's so funny, and he, you know, can turn on a dime and just be vicious, and he can appear to be almost like a monster sometimes, and, you know... You root for him, you hate him, you you know you laugh with him, and every it's you laugh at him. It, it's it's just a great performance. There's, there's he's been winning Emmys the last three years. Um, I don't think he was eligible last year. I don't really know why. I don't I don't understand that. Um, he's a character that it's just going into like a descent, um, and he's just getting worse and worse as a human being. Um, and Jesse, his counterpart, is getting better. And you really, you know, Jesse in the first season is very different. He, you know, seems more or less an idiot. Um, they give him some things to make him seem like, hey, look, he, you know, he's a good guy, but he's not, you know, as bright. 
Uh, but he gets a great arc through the series. He just basically... He gets tore down, much like Walt does, except Jesse has a completely different reaction to it. While Walt is just becomes more numb and just a much more terrible human being, Jesse, while doing terrible things, you know, you feel worse for him because it really weighs on him really badly, uh, unlike Walt. Um, I guess I'll talk about Skyler. Skyler's my least favorite character, which is not surprising. Uh, I, I know for a lot of people that watch that show, this show, um, the problem with her is that she doesn't, she just doesn't stop nagging. Um, but the real problem is that she's usually right. Like, she'll be, you know, yelling at Walt about something, and it's like, shut up, just enough, just leave him alone, but she'll be saying things, and she'll be completely right. And you almost, like, are forced to intellectually side with her, but you just can't, you just can't fucking stomach her. Um, yeah, that's how I feel about Skylar. Uh, Walter Jr. is not really that much of a, of a character. He likes breakfast. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, no, he had some good stuff in the, the last season, but he, he, he's not really much of a focal point, um, for the show, he's a side character, which I'll get into side characters in a little bit. Uh, the other two, Hank and Marie, uh, Skyler's sister and uh, Skyler's brother-in-law, and Walt's brother-in-law, Hank the DEA agent. At first, he seems to be, you know, a very like crude, obnoxious like character in the first season, uh, but he proves to be you know, really intelligent, and they give him some great, you know, arcs throughout season two and three. Um, and uh, and Marie, I thought. I was going to hate Marie after the first couple of episodes, but um, bring me back to the intervention episode from the first season where she kind of, like, backed up Walt and said, hey, if you don't want to get treatment for your, you know, cancer, um, then that's okay. It's your choice. Right from there on, I liked her, and I, I do like her. I have, I have like, no problem with her whatsoever, which is surprising. Um, so, uh... So actually, I should probably say a little like maybe spoiler warning. I'm probably going to talk about all four seasons of the show. So if you haven't watched, um, I'll put it in the title. I guess if you haven't watched, then you know, don't watch this. Um, the thing I got to say about the characters on the show that they do better than others is the writers understand who the main characters are and who are the side characters. What I mean is they know that. Unless Hank and Skyler and, you know, and Jesse, I'm not sure, excuse me, Hank, Skyler, Marie, and uh, Walter Jr., unless any of those people are doing something interesting, something that we're going to care about, or something, you know, just something worth watching, unless they're doing that, then they're not in the episode, or they don't take up that much screen time, or at least they try not to. Um, you know, a good chunk of the, of the season finales on the show don't even have those characters in them. Or they might have, like, one scene. Because the show understands that's not why we're tuning in. It understands that, you know, we want to see what's going on with Walt and Jesse and eventually with Gus and all that stuff. A lot of TV shows do not get that. Um, you know, you're watching, like, you watch stuff like The Walking Dead where they try to give every character a storyline. Um, which you want to say it's admirable, but then you look at all the storylines they give them and they're all kind of, like, mediocre. And it's like, what are you doing? Um... I've done reviews here on Dexter, where the most interesting character in the show is Dexter. Uh, yes, and his you know sister in that show is interesting, but why are you giving stories to those like side cops that do not need to be in every single episode? They don't need their own little mini season arc if it's not going to be good. Um, Breaking Bad doesn't fall into that trap. True Blood's another show that has like 15 characters, um, and they give them all something to do every single episode, which we do not need. Um, you know, the only show, maybe like Game of Thrones, the first season, they had, they did a good job because they had like 15 main characters, but they would like leave characters out of com completely out of episodes and pick it up later. Um, a good example with this with is like Hank's character. You know, season two he has a really big arc, so he's in it. You know, a good chunk of the time. Um, season three he has a huge arc in the the first half, um, leading up to his confrontation with the two twins in season three, and then he. You don't really see much of him after he, you know, as he recovers. He's not in the finale because who wants to watch him in the bed in the finale 
while we when we got to deal with you know what's going on with Walt and Jesse. That is what the show understands, and thank God, um, it understands you know A, B, and C as far as you know plots go. There's the A plot, B, and C, and the other two aren't needed if the A pl if you know if it's like if the A plot if the A plot is needed to take up the entire hour, then do it. The B and C can wait. Um, if you understand what I'm saying. I hope anyone's watching this does. Um, as far as ranking the seasons go, um, first season was very good. Second season was even better. Uh, although, um, like the first season got cut shepherd, the writer's strike, so it was anticlimactic. And season two had the advantage of starting out like really, really fast because it had to finish off season one's arc. Um, with Tuco, and then it was allowed to kind of pick right up and go into season two and wrap that up much quicker. Um, I think Tuco's story is kind of wrapped up in the second episode of season two, so season two is really just 11 episodes after that um, that they take for a, a storyline. Um, they do the whole flash-forward thing with uh, that ends up being a certain, you know, plane crash and everything like that, and I thought it was okay. Um, perhaps I shouldn't have set it up to be the big punchline at the end of the season if it wasn't going to be something mind-blowing. I know why they did it, because it was supposed to be, you know, what Walt did is, you know, the cause of everything, and I understood that. But it wasn't great. It was it, it was, it was still very good. Uh, season 3 is where the show just completely, like, took off for me. The first half of the season, like I said, it had its own, like, little... The first half had its own like arc where the the twins and everything with Gus and all of that is set up leading up to the confrontation with Hank, and then it's time to get to the second half of the season. Uh, so it was like two great mini seasons. Um, you know, season three had its big holy shit moment with Walt, you know, running over the two guys and shooting one and telling Jesse to run. I you better believe I put on the next episode right after that. Um, season three had a good finale. Um, uh, introduced, you know, even the the villains on the the villains on the show, Gus and and Mike, his hitman, uh, Saul, the the lawyer, um, just everybody. Jesse's two uh, friends. It was it Skinny Pete, uh, and I forget the other guy's name. Um, but anyway, like all those characters are actually you kind of end up liking most. I mean, I like Mike a lot. Uh, I like those two side characters with Jesse. Um, uh, what do you call it? Gus, you know, Gus, you you you, you hate, but you kind of do feel for him sometimes. He's a great character. The guy walks around like, you know, like he's a mannequin, basically, come to life. Or a robot or something like that. But uh, he can just turn it on like that. And uh, he was, yeah, he was just great. Um, I'm trying to think if there's somebody else, another character I'm missing. Well, um... But anyway, uh, and then like season four, I thought the show stumbled a little bit in the first half of season four, where it felt like it didn't have like the 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 first half that season three had. You know, it didn't have like a villain for the first half of the season, which was those two twins. It kind of just felt like season four they were waiting to pull the trigger around episode like seven or so, and I was waiting for it as I'm watching this you know the season go like all right when we get to episode seven or eight you know they're gonna take off and they do. Um, but the, still, the fact that the first half felt like they were just waiting to get going, um, you know, that was the weakest uh, probably part of the of the show for me. But then the best part of the show was the second half of season four, including the last like three episodes, which were I think uh, Crawl Space, End Times, and Face Off. Crawl Space has a ending that's just ridiculous with him screaming in the crawl space, and then. Uh, the next episode was great, and the finale, um, you know, with, with Gus, uh, they killed off, you know, Gus, um, and, uh, set up season four in a way where you, or season four, excuse me, the final season with Walt basically on top, but he's got these secrets, uh, that if Jesse finds out, he's in trouble. Um, Hank is going to be on his trail, and, uh, you know, it's going to be a showdown. Plus, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna do make a little predictions for the fifth season now. I, I might as well um, to wrap up. I guess this whole thing. Um, Walt is uh, Walt's definitely gonna at least die. I think. I also I already think his cancer came back. I think uh, season four there was an episode where they. He was talking to the guy in the the hospital in the beginning about, you know, you live your life your own way and all that stuff. And then they kind of glossed over what happened as far as the treatment goes. And he said, oh, you know, at dinner later, he said, oh, I'm fine. You know, it's I'm still in remission. But they glossed over it in a way that makes me think that he has the uh, cancer back and he's going to, um, he's, he's just on his way out. Which makes sense because it is the final year. Um... As far as how it's going to end, it's going to end. It's going to be a mess. It's going to be, a, uh, I think, a pretty tragic ending. Um, in fact, I'm just going to go out. I'll say that I believe that you know, Walt keeps saying over and over again, "I do. I'm doing this for my family. My family." That at first he really sounds like he means it. It really does sound sincere, and you believe him. And by season four, it's just, you know, you look at the guy. This guy is just such a long way from what he was. That. It would be the ultimate, like, tragic irony if he lost someone in his family that he's been doing this for. And I think that's what they're going to do. I think, um... I think they're probably going to kill if, uh, what the the son. Um... It would make sense in the way that the show works. The show's not going to have a happy ending. And him just dying of cancer, that's not enough. He's got to get... It, it, this is the kind of show where he would get caught. Or something terrible is going to happen to him. As far as Jesse being the one that kills him, I've heard that on, online. People have been saying, um, I think Jesse may try to do it, um, but uh, something's gonna go bad for Jesse too. People think Jesse are gonna. I think people think Jesse is gonna get like a the happier ending. I don't think so. I think he's gonna live, but I think he's just gonna go off being more screwed up than he was before. Um, as far as everyone else, I think everyone else is gonna make it. Um, I hope Saul makes it. I like, see, even there's another guy, Saul, that was the one I forgot. He, uh, you know, he looks like the scumbag, uh, like, lawyer, and he's actually pretty loyal. Um, it's just a really good character. Anyway, um, yeah, so season five, you know, it's gonna be a mess. Um, I would really like to see if they open the season the same way they did season two, with, like, a flash forward to the end. Um... That would be cool. I think that would be a good way to open it. Uh, I don't know what that end would be, you know. If it would be, like, after a shootout with Hank and, you know, Walt's bloody in the street dying or something like that, or whatever. Um, that's just an example. I don't think they're going to do that, but uh, it would be a pretty good way to go. All right, anyway, Vince Gilligan, awesome series. Actors, great. Everyone behind the show is great. Um, if you are not watching this show... Uh, I hope you didn't watch this video because I would have spoiled uh, plenty for you. Uh, but if you're not watching this show, watch it. Um, if you are, let me know what you thought of what I thought of it. And uh, I'll be doing reviews on the show uh, when it comes back, hopefully in July. Um, I love that there's a final season. I'm pissed that AMC might split it up into two eight-episode se eight seasons because that can change the way the writers will write the show. They might write, you know, as two eight episode seasons instead of one long 16 episode season but um but we shall see all right guys later